Dan at SP Motorsport. On this week's product spotlight, we're going to be going over our intakes that we offer for the 2020 plus GT500s. They're carbon fiber intakes and we offer them in two stages. On the table we have our stage one and after we go over this intake we're going to go over our stage two as well. So obviously the intake is made up of a carbon fiber tube, filter, and box slash shield assembly which we'll get more into that here in a minute. So we also have our mount here, and the one thing with our mount, it's an isolator style mount. So it's a multi-piece. It's a little more in depth than you know the factory unit and what a lot of other uh, companies are using. But what the mount does is that actually allows us to have adjustment and movement in the box. So you know when these cars come from the factory, the engine isn't always sitting in the exact same spot. Um, they, the engine mount bolts rest on a single stud on each side. So if you would actually loosen those up, you can shift the motor side to side roughly an eighth inch or maybe even more. And all that stuff will mess with the positioning of the box in relation to the motor and the tube, obviously. So what we do is we, we did a nice isolator unit that's made out of Delrin and billet aluminum. And what that allows you to do is push the box forward and backward and also give it a little bit of articulation. So when the motor's moving and everything's kind of um, shifting in there, you know, whether you're under torque or just driving, uh, it's not rigidly mounted. So you heard me say earlier, box slash shield. Well, that's exactly what this is. It's not just a shield and it's not an, a completely enclosed box either. Um, we're gonna go into some testing data here in a minute, but the box does come in a wrinkle style, like black wrinkle style finish, powder coat, and it does actually match the shock tower brace. So the, the shock tower brace that goes across the top of the supercharger from each uh, side of the car. And the nice thing about that, we really wanted it to match. That's the, that's the thing we were really shooting for with that. And it does pretty well. Um, another thing that we did, a little different than some of the other intakes on the market. Uh, it does obviously have all the factory connections. The bypass valve connection for the supercharger, the vent port, uh, we actually did a, a billet fitting rather than a plastic one. There's a lot of uh, plastic ones that are done by other companies that always break off. We obviously didn't want to have that issue, so we did a billet version. Um, another thing that sets our intakes apart from the competition is also the intake air temperature sensor location. On a factory car, it's kind of up top and in your face, you can see it very blatantly. Uh, there's no need for it to necessarily be right there. So we moved it to the bottom side of the intake. Uh, plenty of wiring to, to do that. So it fits really well that way. And it's out of your, your sight. So when you open the hood, it's one less thing. The tube seems to flow better and it just looks nicer more aesthetically appealing. And then a cotton filter. Um, the cotton filter is blue oiled and we actually plan on adding red filters as well. Uh, blue is what we have to offer at this moment um, while we're doing this video, but we will have more options to come because we know how everyone likes to coordinate colors with their car and, and, and make all that appealing. All right guys, so now that we kind of covered the overview of the stage one here, we're gonna go ahead and put the stage two together so you can kind of see what that looks like on the bench. All right, everyone, got the stage two intake set up here on the table now. Uh, obviously, the main difference is the carbon box. The tube's exactly the same, filter's the same, but it does come with the carbon box and our track tube set up. So the, in the stage two form here with, obviously it looks very similar to the stage one, the only difference being the box, it's not necessarily a performance gain. Um, it is lighter than the aluminum version, and it's obviously more physically appealing. But the one thing that we do with this setup is the track tube, and that is the main difference. The track tube in the Stage 2 setup is basically designed to give you the best possible scenario when you're at the drag strip. So obviously you want as much cool air as you can possibly get into the engine. So when you get to the drag strip, all you have to do is take an eight millimeter uh, socket or flathead screwdriver and you're gonna loosen up the filter, pop it off, 
And this comes with a coupler and another clamp. You'll take the clamp off of the filter, put the clamp on the coupler and on the track tube and literally slide it on. So basically one bolt or one clamp and you're swapping it out. So it's pretty easy and it's simple to do for when you're at the track and you kind of know the environment you're running the car in. Um, we've seen a lot of performance gains with the track tube setup. Uh, it does work very, very well. And we have a lot of data that we're gonna put up in a blog post and actually show you guys some pictures and everything that we kind of went through. But just to sum up um, the idea behind the box and shield setup and the track tube, uh, I'll, I'll kind of do that briefly here. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of stuff floating around out there on the interwebs about, do we want a box? Do I want a shield? Do I want an open filter entirely? And there really isn't a right or wrong answer for all vehicles. Um, every application is a little bit different. And that is the approach that we took with the 500. So the initial approach that we took was we took a stock car to the track which a lot of people who have developed these intake systems for these cars, that's one thing that not all of them do. And we started there, we started at the track. We put pressure sensors on it, an anemometer, uh, temperature sensors, a bunch of things. Ran the car, the car ran best with the lid off of the box. So that immediately kind of, you know, struck my mind a little bit and that immediately pushed us into you know, figuring out why that is and, you know, what's, what's the reasoning behind pulling the lid off the box when the lid's not even sealed to the hood like a lot of other manufacturers make. Um, it's not sealed to the hood. It's a small volume in there. And you would think that, you know, the way it's set up, that that wouldn't be a performance gain, but it is. Uh, every, every factory car uh, with no modifications that people have ran at the track they're running them without the lid on to get optimum times. So we kind of started there. We had our baseline, you know, the best way to figure out, you know, the optimum route to go for testing our intakes was to obviously compare it to other stuff on the market. So we did compare our intakes. Um, we did a lot of testing with uh, our initial development pieces and our, our prototype stuff. And we also did a lot of testing on our competition stuff too, because we want to know what we're up against and we want to give our customers the best possible product we can. So basically we did all that testing and we came up with a few things which were kind of mind boggling uh, in a way because you gotta be fucking kidding me. Yeah, Ronnie. Some of the things, you know, about the testing that we did that was very mind boggling to me and, and everyone else was the stereotypical outlook on the box and how you want to seal the box to the front of the car. Um, it makes perfect sense. And obviously you just want cool air entering the intake. The denser the air, the more power you make. All makes perfect sense. But what we found is the inlet on the grill in the Mustang the S550 chassis, to be specific, um, wasn't that large. You know, it, it was designed initially, you know, not for the 760 horsepower that the, that the GT500 makes. Uh, the S550 chassis, you know, didn't have that engine until a lot later in life. So what we noticed is a bunch of weird pressure drops and the fact that Really, the air volume that needed to be in that box that was sealed, whether it was our com whether it was our competitor's box or whether it was the factory box, it diminished very quickly. Um, so what we noticed is by opening the box up, but still yet shielding as much heat away from it as possible, uh, it ended up helping out quite a bit. And then the other thing we we attempted and tried and also tested was the gasketing of the, vo the box to the hood. Um, we, we ran a lot of different tests uh, so that we could have obviously the best possible setup. And after doing all this testing, we figured out that by having the box where it wasn't completely sealed, we were able to 
um, bypass static air and pressure buildup and get more volume just to the filter. And that seemed to be the most helpful, you know, to make power. So we took that one step further. You know, we wanted obviously to eliminate any filter is going to be a bit of a restriction. So, you know, anybody that's running a full blown race car knows that they're not running air filters, you know, whether it's a, a top fuel car or a Cobra jet car or something you built in your garage. If you're taking it to the track and you're, you're running it to the best of its ability, you're probably not going to have a filter on it. So we wanted that approach, but we didn't want to make it a permanent approach. So that's where the track tube came in. So what you can do, as I already stated, is you can take the filter off, swap this out very quickly. Um, one of the weird things about the track tube is once again, we don't funnel it all the way down to the inlet in the grill for many reasons. And obviously the reason of volume. Another thing to bring up about the inlet on the grill is the actual throttle plate flows more volume or moves more air through it than the hole in the grill does. So just to give you an understanding of that, you know, if your throttle body and your tube and everything feeding the throttle body is larger than the opening in the grill, why would we want to seal down to that? So that's why the track tube looks the way that it does. It's not a sealed, it's not sealed like most of the boxes and other intakes do down to that inlet of the grill. It's open, giving us the ability to not only get the cool airflow from the front of the car from that hole, but also anything else passing through the front of the car can be pulled in that way. So you're still getting best case scenario, you're shielding you know, the heat and the rad and everything that's gonna be in this general area of the tube, you're still shielding that out of the way and you're getting as much front airflow as you can from the front of the car. So um, obviously there was a lot of testing to figure that out and it does look a little different and it looks kind of against the grain compared to you know, other stuff that's on the market, but it's, it works very well. So we, like I, as I stated uh, earlier, we plan on doing a blog and we're gonna put up kind of the testing process, even the R&D process of how we came up with all this and what went into it. We actually worked on this intake uh, for well over about a year. And the thing is, is, you know, everybody came out with an intake for these cars really quickly. And after looking at the data and doing everything that we did for testing, um, we're happy that we didn't. We're happy that we waited it out and came up with the best possible intake we could come up with. And I think that shows. And the performance gains are there on a stock car, just bolting even our stage one in. Um, no tuning changes are required on these cars because they're not mass airflow. So you have nothing measuring airflow on the intake track. It's all post throttle body. So uh, obviously no tuning then, but we were seeing anywhere from 28 to 30, um, maybe even a little bit more than that horsepower wise at the tire, just from, just from an intake change. So, um, it does work very well. They sound great. That's something that, that we really like about this design as well, without having it cramped in a box and funneled to the front of the car. Um, you get a little bit more noise from it as well. All right. So that pretty much covers our little overview here of the stage one and the stage two. Um, we do also want to thank everybody that helped us. Uh, obviously we did testing and then we kind of did third party testing too. Uh, uh, Kelly Aiken from Keltrack helped us out quite a bit. Um, had a lot of good input on it and uh, yeah, so we're pretty happy about it. We're glad that we took the time over the last year or so to really get the, uh, get the intake systems really developed and you know, provide our customers with the best possible thing that we think we can make. So uh, we'll wrap this thing up and we're actually gonna do an install video as well. So we'll put the link to that in the description. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.